Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a get ready with me on this look here. I really have to get going. I have a concert in literally an hour's time, so I really need to hustle and get to the venue. But I've just finished doing my makeup for it. I just did a very chatty kind of get ready with me. Um, I normally vlog my concert days, but my vlogging camera that I want to get, that's like literally in the post, hasn't made it to me yet. So I wasn't able to do like a follow me vlog today. Um, I'm just getting a bit tired of the quality of my iPhone vlogs. So I hope you enjoy this look anyway. This is kind of my go-to glam look, like maybe minus the red lip. I usually change up the lip for like different colors depending on the situation, but um, at least the eyes, this is like my go-to glamorous look for like a special occasion. So I hope you like the video. Let's get into it. Do you ever have a shower and then one of your ears kind of feels like it's full of water? Oh. I feel like I can't hear at all. That's not good before a concert. So I'm gonna start out with some primer because obviously I'm gonna be on stage, there's gonna be really hot stage lights and I want my makeup to last really well. So I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Mattifying Base. I actually find that this doesn't mattify all that much but it is a silicon based primer so it's really great for longevity and also for making your foundation smooth on really nicely on top. Then for foundation, I'm going to use my MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. I find that this is a really great formula for making my foundation stay on really well in the performance. So that's why I've grabbed that one. I usually love to wear like a really full coverage on stage just because I feel like stage makeup looks better with a really flawless canvas. And one of my favorite full coverage foundations is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable, but I found that it tends to sometimes wear off, especially where my violin sits around here. It just rubs off really badly onto my instrument and pretty much every foundation is going to rub off where the wood is in contact with my skin but I find that this one doesn't do it nearly as bad so I'm just going to use my beauty blender to blend that in. This leaves a really nice finish to the foundation and to the skin however I'll probably have to go in for a second layer because it does tend to share it out a little bit using a beauty blender. I don't actually like this one as much. This is the new marble swirly kind of beauty blender. I picked it up because I needed a new one, but it just doesn't have quite the same texture. It's still really soft and bouncy, but it kind of has a slightly more like rough texture to the outside and I find it really, really hard to clean. See, so yeah, I'm just going to stick on a second layer just to really build that up. I have this horrific pimple on my chin. I haven't had a pimple in actually quite some time. My skin has been going through such a good time lately, but I don't know what it was. I just ended up with this enormous like cystic kind of pimple on my chin. And it's one of those ones that wouldn't come to the surface and all I had to do was just wait it out, which is infuriating. That's what I'm doing, waiting it out to go away, but I'm actually running a little bit late today for this concert, I feel. Um, it just took me so long to like set up all my lights and stuff in a new way and one of my soft boxes I had two arrive and one of them the fuse blue so I've actually got a soft box there and a ring light there and I'm not sure it's working but it's all I had I just had to work with it. For concealer I'm going to use my Tarte Shape Tape in Fair. This one is again really really full coverage and it also lasts it just does not budge so it's perfect to use for stage makeup. And it does look like I put a heck of a lot of this on. It is actually it is quite a bit of product, but because I use a beauty blender to blend it out, it basically absorbs all the excess, so it only leaves you with the product that you really want on your skin. So we've got a really beautiful program for tonight's concert. We're doing Wagner, Tristan and Nizold, the Prelude and Lebstod. I think that's how you pronounce it, so sorry if I butchered it. It's basically like an orchestral overture that was from the music from the, the opera. It's a very popular piece for orchestras to perform, so it's really great to be able to learn it you know, while we're at university. And to set my face today, I'm going to use my Hourglass Diffused Light Powder, which is really, really luminescent and it doesn't look heavy or matte because I don't really want matte skin. I just need to be able to set my foundation in place, my concealer. And then we're also playing tonight for a copy of Second Piano Concerto uh, with the winner of the concerto comp from last year, um, which is a really edgy piece, let's just say that. It's really like Russian angsty sort of piece of music. Um, it's not always that pretty, but it certainly has a lot of guts, so it's quite fun to play, actually. I'm just going to do a really small amount of contouring. I'm using my Illamasqua Eyeshadow and Heroin, along with my NARS ITA brush. And the other piece we're playing, the final piece after the break, is Rachmaninoff's Symphony No. 2, which is such a beautiful piece. Like, if you love mushy, romantic, beautiful orchestral music, you know, 
nothing too edgy, nothing too challenging, like it's just a gorgeous love song essentially, um, then you will love it. There are so many like heart melting moments in it, but it's very easy to get self-indulgent so you have to kind of hold a little bit of restraint. But I'm quite looking forward to that. It is a very difficult symphony though. Rachmaninoff was actually a pianist. He wrote beautiful piano concertos as well. Um, but it means that his string writing is really challenging and fiddly. So for bronzer, I'm going to use a bit of my Hoola Light Bronzer and this enormous powder brush from Fearless Cosmetics. This is from the Body Couture Kit. And I've really been enjoying this again just for when I want a really general kind of sweep of bronzer rather than like anything too sort of specific. I just want to kind of warm up my complexion softly. I want the blush to really like be the hero of my cheek work. I sound like I'm off MasterChef. So I'm just doing a very soft application of that just all over my cheeks and up on my forehead. It might not look like I'm applying much at all. It does make a bit of a difference. It just sort of warms your face without actually making it look like you're wearing a lot of bronzer. Of course I do down my neck as well. The blush I've chosen my Too Faced Love Flush Blush in Baby Love. And I'm just using my usual Surat Beauty blush brush to apply it. And for highlight, I'm using my current favourite highlight. This is Makeup Geek Lit. I'm so obsessed with this. I have hit pan on it, but I actually have another one in the post already on its way because Makeup Geek is sending me a lovely parcel full of goodies. And they said I could like, you know, pick a highlighter to go in it. And of course I was like, I need a backup of this. Because <laughs> I actually own four of the Makeup Geek highlighters. The, all of the ones that sort of work for pale skin, like fair to porcelain skin. But I only use two of them regularly. I use this one and the shade Glitz, which is a really similar shade to like Laura Mercier Devotion. But I have two sort of like holographic-y duochrome ones that are like, you know, have a purple undertone or a blue undertone. And honestly, I just don't reach for them. I'm not someone to wear like mermaid makeup or holographic makeup or anything so I think I might actually I might do a makeup decluttering video soon and actually get rid of those give them to someone else because I just don't reach for them very often I love this highlighter because it's actually quite subtle it's just such a beautiful sheen it's got no glitter in it it's just literally pearlescent sheen oh I love it so much so now I'm going to do my brows I use the same routine in almost every video at the moment. It's my benefit little trio. I start with precisely my brow pencil in shade 2 on the inner part of my brow, the Cabral gel cream colour on the outer part of my brow, that's also in shade 2, and I finish off with Gimme Brow in shade 3, and it's like my perfect little brow combo. It gives me a nice ombre to the brow without it looking like too overdone. For eyeshadow, you can probably tell what I'm going to use, my Tarte Tarte palette, because I've been using this as my mirror for the rest of the video. It's such a great palette, I've just really gotten back into using it. I'm going to go in first with this colour Free Spirit, which is a matte sort of cream colour. And just my Mecca Cosmetica blending brush, and I'm just kind of putting this sort of all over. I'm going to do quite a basic look, because I'm going to use my Stila Glitter as the sort of feature of the eyes. I'm taking this colour Force of Nature, which is a really nice sort of pinky, dusky crease colour. That same brush, like pretty much what I do in every single damn tutorial. <laughs> I'm just going to build this up into the crease. I can't ever do anything too experimental for concerts because one time I wore a burgundy lip and someone in the audience decided to write in and say that my gothic makeup was not appropriate. I was like, <gasps> It was so not gothic, in fact, I'll try and insert a picture if I remember of what it was actually, like what I was actually wearing that day. But then I'm going to go into the colour Dreamer, which is the next one along, it's like a slightly warmer crease colour, and this defined blending brush by Hakuhodo. And I'm just going to sort of concentrate this on the outer half of that crease, it's just, just to add a little bit of depth. And I'm going to go back in with that colour Force of Nature and this sort of defined large pencil brush by Hourglass, this is the number 4 brush, and I'm going to smoke out my lower lash line with this. 
I've really been enjoying like adding quite a bit of shadow to my lower lash line lately. I feel like it really balances my face. It looks kind of hilarious before I add the rest of my eye makeup. Eyeliner, mascara, lashes, all that. But once that's all on, this can look amazing. And then maybe I am getting sick again because I can feel my throat like getting all croaky. I sound like a smoker. Smell it good, smell it good. What I feel. Thumbs up if you know that reference. So that means you're in the Cool Kids Club. Last thing I'm going to take this colour here, Multitasker, which is a really deep cool toned brown. And I really dirty Hakuhoto brush but it doesn't matter because it's dirty with like really pale colors so shouldn't taint it but it's really good for just adding a bit of extra depth to this outer part of the eye I mean I'm just not one to build up my eyeshadows though too dark eh like sometimes I watch tutorials from other people and I think to myself like I just don't apply much product like my looks are always, like, even if they're dramatic, they're probably quite subtle for most people. Like, for, compared to other gurus. So what I think I'll do before I add my glitter is actually do my eyeliner. I'm going to do a pencil liner. So I'm using the Zoeva Graphic Eyes Eyeliner. And I like to just apply quite a lot of this to the sort of outer part of my lid. And then grab my Fearless Cosmetics it's a brush and just kind of smudge it into the lower lash uh, upper lash line smudge it into the lash line so used to saying lower lash line it just kind of rolls off the tongue I'm going to take that colour kind of far in because I imagine I'll cover a little bit of it with the glitter I might actually just go back into that really dark brown colour from this palette and my hourglass number 4 brush and I will try to build up some intensity in that outer corner. Or kind of outer third of the lid, I guess. So for the glitter, I'm going to use the Stella Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow in the color Diamond Dust, which is so beautiful. And I'm also going to use, just to kind of like smooth it out and apply it, the Eco Tools Detail Concealer Brush. It's just a really tiny little brush. Um, it's actually really great for this purpose. So the way I normally apply my glitter is I will sort of just slap it on in the general area that I want it and then go in with that little brush and just kind of spread it with that. So I'm trying to keep this um, concentrated on the lid. Ah, oh, it looks so pretty. The glitter kind of covered some of the depth and just to sort of tidy up the crease. Just going in with that dark colour multitasker from the palette, the dark cool tone brown. And just kind of sculpting out that crease. And also adding some of that depth into that corner again. It will cover a little bit of the glitter, but it will make it look a little bit more seamless. Yeah, it's way nicer. I am going to line my waterline with my Chi Chi eye right now because I want my eyes to look nice and big. For mascara, I'm going to use a new favourite of mine. It's the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. This has a really nice, fat, kind of traditional bris bristle? <laughs> bristle brush kind of on it. So I'm just going to apply this to my top lashes only. I prefer to use a waterproof on my lower lashes, so I'm just going to grab my... Oh, I've got a L'Oreal one that I don't really like, but it's waterproof, so it's fine. But this mascara I really love. It builds up a lot of volume. Volume. It kind of reminds me a lot of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. And Lancome mascara is like, that's the thing they're really known for, I think. Like, Lancome do really good mascaras. So while I was waiting for my mascara and glitter to dry, I just went and curled, like blow dried my hair and curled it. And now I'm going to pop in my extensions. The hair extensions I use are by Luxie here. 
I actually ombre dyed them myself, they're not a very good job so don't look close but it does help just to kind of disguise the roots in my hair. But yeah, if you're in the market for some hair extensions I would highly recommend checking out Luxie Hair. They use the highest grade hair possible and it's all ethically sourced so it's not stolen from little girls or anything like some hair extension companies are. It's very much ethically sourced and the workers that actually put the hair extensions together are paid really really well and looked after with three meals a day and they only have to work eight hours a day and it's just really nice. I really, that's what drew me to the company is it had such ethical standards in place for their business protocols. So that's why I decided to work with Luxie Hair because I just really was impressed with their um, ethical standpoint on hair extensions. So the way I normally put my extensions in, I start by sectioning off a really, really low part of my hair, usually going from my earlobes around the back. So I section off this top bit, I flip this forward and just grab a big clip and kind of chuck it up like that. <laughs> then I get my comb and really tease the base of the hair so that the hair extension has something to grip to and it won't fall out. The last thing I want is a hair extension falling out on stage. That would be very embarrassing. <laughs> and I start with one of the three clips and then I just simply kind of wriggle and clip them in like that. And then this is what it looks like with them in and I've also put my hair up in like a little clip just to keep it out of my face because when I'm performing I don't want my hair like all in my face because it'll distract me. <laughs> These are the earrings I'm going to wear and then I'm going to do a red lip to kind of really make it really glamorous. So for my red lip I'm going to use my Steel Estate All Day Liquid Lipstick and Facer. I just saw actually that they're coming out with a metallic version for Christmas time which is so exciting because my favourite, favourite red colour. I just realised I hadn't put on my falsies either, so I'm going to stick these on. These are the Cara Lashes by Glam by Manicure, so I'm just going to pop those on my lids. So that's the finished look there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me if you did enjoy it. If you want to see my last tutorial, you can click on this video up here to go watch that. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click on my face down here. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!